Okay, hello YouTube. Uh, today I'm just going to play a little bit more um, H4 or H5. So it looks like this is going to be another H5 game. Okay, F4 is already a mistake. I can either play C6 and D5 or even the immediate D5 here. Um, I'm going to play C6 and D5. Uh, this looks like it's working out really good. Already black is probably equal here. So I've already equalized. Uh, I've gotten rid of my bad bishop in a situation. Uh, where pawns are all locked on light squares for black and pawns are all locked on dark squares for white. So this is generally speaking a very good thing. Uh, but just getting rid of my bad bishop shouldn't be enough for an advantage. So this position is probably just equality because my better pieces are outweighed by the fact that he has slightly more space. So the position is probably very close to equal at this point. But that can go downhill <laughs> pretty fast depending on what he does. Uh, so we're going to play knight of five. I considered taking and just going after this pawn as well, one that was an option. Uh, now I have to decide if I want to play queen d5. Queen d5 is very tempting just because it puts a lot of pressure on d4. Cd5 is more natural. Because now I'm going to follow up with knight c6, which is a super natural square for my knight. I do have to be kind of like... I, you always have to be cautious that you're not getting into too much trouble on the light squares here. So, like, if bishop... You know, he didn't even try. So, I hope he develops this way, because he's going to fall for knight e3. Okay. Fell for the fork. I kind of figured that's what he was after when he played b3, so I figured I'd give him a move to do it. Sure enough, he did it. Okay, so now we're going to take the exchange. Um, and again, we can exchange this for this or this at any point. Um, I'm not worried about that going away until he... Uh, moves either the knight or the bishop or something. So we have time to just kind of keep developing before we commit to taking, uh, getting rid of our, our light squared bishop. Our light squared bishop is effectively gone at any point, but well now I'm winning material, so now I, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And that's a win of material. He doesn't have queen b5 check because I have knight takes b5. So there shouldn't be any fancy tactics here because I can always throw knight f3 check in in between. Okay, so I'm thinking here I might just... I'm either going to play queen b6 or... I've got a nice position, so I'm thinking I'm going to play queen b6. Just to kind of go after the dark squares. Okay, now here I might be threatening mate in a move or two. He should just trade queens just to survive this position. That's what I would have done. I would have exchanged queens. Do I have something really fancy and ridiculous here? Because, like, I'm debating, like, I might have h5, sacrificing the queen, and then knight g3 check, because I can actually throw in bishop c5 check. And it's too weird, though. Like, it might be winning. I'm going to look on the engine after. Like, it might be completely winning. It's It's frustrating that I'm not playing it but I have a winning position regardless, so I really don't need to risk it. It's so tempting, though. Like, h h4, knight b6. Ah, it's just for fun, I guess. Let me try it. Let me try this queen sec. I'll feel bad if it's not winning. Let's see, does he even take it? He's really thinking about it. Like, should I take it? Should I not take it? Okay, so knight g3. Now, clearly, if he takes, I'm like, uh, well, the more trying line was just king over. Like, this is clearly, clearly winning. Because now I make a new queen. I take, and then I play check, and I make a new queen. So this is over, unfortunately for him. So, like, yeah, this was the idea, but, like, it's it's not clear to me if I was winning if he played the other line. Yeah, this is clearly, clearly winning. Um, yeah, I guess I just take here, open the A file as well. Although it, maybe this is not so precise. I don't think I have to be precise here. It's probably detrimental if I'm too precise. I think I'll just take the rest of this stuff here. And then we don't need to be super precise anymore. Yep, 
This is going to be over in a few more moves. He can resign any time. Any moment now, resignation will be fine. I think I've really just got like mate in three, like takes, takes, and then mate. And I don't see a great way for him to just even not get mated in the next three moves. I mean, he can he can play b4, he can run this way too, and I think it's still mate in pretty short order. Like b4, rook c2, king b3, rook b2, uh, king a3, bishop takes b4 as mate, or not quite mate, he is king there. So a few more moves. But very close to mate. Or he can just let his flag fall, because he's completely lost. Yeah, I forgot, this was anonymous, he's not going to move. <laughs> he's already gotten up, walked away, gotten mad, thrown something. So... Yeah, I mean, so let's see um, on the analysis, because I, I went for it. I don't know. So he plays knight a4. This is my curiosity. Was was h5 correct? Well, I mean, the computer just thinks I'm completely winning if I play queen a5 or something else. But does my assessment drop after h4? No, it doesn't. I was It was sound. I knew it. <laughs> okay, I didn't know it. I just, I, I, I thought maybe. But okay, so what was I curious about? Okay, so knight b6, knight g3. So yeah, this was what I was the most curious about was king g1 bishop c5, and then queen f2. So this is what I thought. And then, yeah, I guess I just have bishop f2, king f2, knight e4, and then king f3, and then ab, and I keep the exchange and nothing bad happens. So it was a no-risk queen sacrifice, as, as weird as that sounds. Uh, a a no-risk way to sacrifice your queen. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it felt like it was winning, and I guess it was. Uh, it was probably a little bit better for me not to bother with it, like I could have just played queen a5, but there there was certainly nothing wrong with with throwing in uh, h5, h h4, and just playing for this win this way, and of course he fell for the, the worst part of it, which is hg, and then it's just completely, completely over. Um, so yeah, I'm just totally winning here. The computer says mate in 8, so I, I probably had a much more efficient way uh, to win. Uh, yeah, just starting with bishop b4 would have been more efficient, but I was just... Um, just, I just efficiently got rid of the rest of his pieces, <laughs> which I guess is another way to go. I don't know. Well, anyways, uh, I, I play h5 again, and again, like, just, like, going back, um, you know, this immediate f4, uh, just keep in mind, like, you know, huge assessment drop as soon as they play f4. This is not great. You don't want to do this against h5, because uh, then when they do play c6 and d5, uh, as soon as he played e5, again, this position is now dead equal. So, like, he went from advantage white to a position that was dead equality uh, within three or four moves. And if we just start the position on move four from here, uh, and we haven't seen the rest of the game, uh, you know, this is just an equal position that everybody can play from. Uh, so if you just really want to take advantage of h5, just don't don't touch your f-pawn. <laughs> and you'll, you'll be much, much better off. <laughs> okay, well, anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. I uh, hope you learned something new about chess. hope you can use some of these ideas in your own games. Thank you for watching.